hello guys hello guys uh, welcome to another video today we're going to look at vic 75 so you know how we do things here we'll look at different time frames and then towards the end of the video that's where we all use the analysis that we went through to decide whether we should be searching for buy trades or sell trades so you need to make sure that you stick with us until the end so that you'll be, be able to take advantage of this setup that we're about to come up with now so it's going to be something that we're starting from scratch you can see the chart doesn't have any drawings so we will go through, you know, all the time frames, drawing all the, you know, the, the, the trend lines and the zones. And then when we, we say using all of that, we're going to decide whether we should be searching for trades to go up or down. So let's get started. Uh, so if you're new here, make sure that you also check out the other videos that we put because we always do the, this uh, every week. We have a couple of videos on our uh, channel. So let's get started. Uh, you know, we always say, I always say that it's very important for you to start with the highest time frame so that it gives you the bigger picture and then from the bigger picture you can go to the other time frames and then try and assess the structure that side and compare it to what you saw in the bigger picture so that when you make your decision to say i will be searching for trades to go up or i will be searching for trades to go down you know very well that you have got something there's a concrete um, evidence if i can put it like that or when you're doing your analysis, there's a reason why you're saying you're searching for trades to go up or down. Because you cannot just go on H1 and open the chart and then start executing there without checking how the structure on the other time frames looks like. So I'll try, let's see. So this is our monthly chart. So on the monthly chart, let's mark the, the, the important structure. So we have got our resistance. So if you've been here and watch the previous video that we made on this week 75 you'll see that the structure still look the same because it's a monthly chart so it's going to take a very long time before the structure changes so that's our resistance and this is our support so we can see that we are inside the support and but in terms of the structure or the trend the trend is bearish but now we've hit a support and it's a very high time frame support so meaning it is strong it can hold the price and cause it to sort of pull back and go you know start to go up because of what the location it being inside the support right so that's why if you go down on the other time frames the smaller time frames where you'll be executing if you find that there's a structure that's suggesting that you should be searching for buy trades it's not a bad idea for you to go with that setup why because even the bigger time frame even the bigger time frame is on your side it is also suggesting that uh, the price here can turn and go for a pullback or change the structure complete. All right, so now that we know that uh, we are inside the support, what are we going to do on our smaller time frames? We will assess the structure that side. Uh, another mistake, I think what the mistake that most people make is that they will say the price is inside a monthly support, right? They know it's inside the monthly support. They don't care how the structure looks. Maybe let's say on H4 or H1, they just go and say, I know I'm inside the monthly support. Let me buy. But that time the person is trading on a very small account. They have they don't even wait for confirm. Yes, we know that we're inside a monthly support, but the zone is a very big zone that I don't think your small account can hold if you wanted to trade the whole zone. So that's why you need to first say, okay, on the bigger time frame, I'm inside the support. And then on the time frame where I'll be executing my trades, I just need to wait for the conditions there to uh, be in line with that support that I saw on the bigger time frames. Then that's when you can pull the trigger. Because now if you just pull the trigger using the location that we're inside a monthly support, you're not going to survive. You know, the price can still do something like this, play around there and then go up. You see, it respected the support, but this deep here, because it's happening on monthly, your account cannot survive that. So you need to be careful there. So let's check what we have on a, a weekly chart. Okay, the weekly chart, the things are, are starting to get interesting, right? So this is what we have on the weekly chart. So we're just going to do the same thing. Assess the structure here compared to what you compare it to what you saw on monthly and see if they agree with one another. So we are still bearish here in terms of the structure or the trend. And even in the monthly, we said we are bearish. And we are also, if you scroll to the left, you'll find that you are also around the areas of support there, which is not a big deal. Uh, we have got our bearish trend line. Remember, we are bearish. There is your bearish trend line. Here is your resistance. Support is the one that we just marked now. And if you look at how, even in the previous video, I made this comment. I said that compare how the price moved from here to here, right? And compare how it moved from here 
to where it is currently and ch tell me if the, the 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 aggressiveness is the same so if you check when it was moving the first movement it was very precise like it was very direct they like the bears were very strong you can see that they meant what they were doing but here as much as they're still pushing from here going down slowly but if you check how they are pushing you can see that they are no longer comfortable they are no longer really in control and again look at what they, they allow the bulls to do the bulls are now forming what you call a bullish rejection candlestick which can be a very powerful uh, reversal pattern you see so that's why you can say all of this is happening we are bearish but there's a higher chance of it going up to at least somewhere around that trend line you can see that there's a lot of pressure to push the price back up like it's a lot the location monthly support weekly support weekly bullish uh, rejection candlestick so there's a lot of pressure to cause the price to go up at least towards that bearish trend line so at least even on the weekly chart you can see that on the time frame the weekly time frame that it still allows with uh, it still allows uh, it still sort of agrees with our monthly chart so buying right now it's something that is uh, sort of high odd to be precise so let's check the next time frame which is a daily time frame let's see what we got here so the daily most probably still bearish uh, as well uh, you can put your bearish turn line maybe from there and then push it like that and you can see that we are still bearish we haven't broken the bearish trend line. We haven't moved higher than what? The resistance. We are at the resistance. We are bearish. Which means, that's why I'm saying, yes, we saw that we're inside uh, a monthly support. But if you just go jump in without having to check the structures on those small time frames where you're going to be executing from, you're going to be in trouble. Because now, here's the price. If, let's say, maybe, I'm giving an example. Let's say, maybe... You were able to ca catch uh, the price there, take a buy trade, right? You are not going to say, I took a buy trade. Now uh, the price is going up because we're inside the monthly support. I know it has to go all the way up like that. Yes, it's possible. But now you need to look at the obstacles on your way there. It's going to be very difficult for it to go there. So here's the very strong obstacle here. The structure here is still bearish. We are hitting two bearish structures, which is your trend line and that resistance. And you can see that they are not going to allow the price to pass here easily. They can still cause it to go to the downside like that and continue with their uh, downtrend. For as long as this downtrend, look at this, it's going to be a downtrend, but it does not mean now it has changed what uh, we had on monthly. On monthly, still the same. Even if the price was to come back here, we will still be inside that monthly support. We will still be looking for those buy trades, you see. But your account cannot survive this if you go in uh, early. You see, that's why you need to make sure that, yes, I know the location on the bigger time frames. It says that if I search for buy trades, it's not a bad idea. But you need to say on the very same time frame or higher where you executed, you need to make sure that when you hit the opposing structure, you cut down, you remove some of your trades, you tighten your stop losses or you just uh, exit completely. So where to from here? So here, because it's a daily chart, I think you just need to put this here and then draw that and say, if, if you were to get a sell trade, if you were to get confirmation here to take a sell trade, you need to make sure that you, you always remember that it is a short time trade. It's a smash and grab because of what? Of all that pressure that we saw on the monthly support and uh, the bullish uh, rejection candlesticks on the weekly chart. So they can shoot the price up like that. They can shoot it up like that. So you need to make sure that you wait for confirmation if you want to sell. Here's the location allows you to have a short-term trade to get to the downside. But it needs to be with the proper confirmation there. And if you want to, you are trading on daily, you want to buy. You can wait for it to break this bearish trend line and also to move higher than the resistance. Then you catch the pullback. Then you're going to say, now I know that the obstacle that I was worried about, which is the trend line and that resistance, they will be out of your way. Then you will trade comfortably knowing very well that they are not there anymore to, to push the price against your, your trade. Yeah, so that's how you should do it. Now let's check the H4, which is where the execution areas, like uh, where some of us execute some time or you can even go lower than that. So this is how the H4 looks like. And at the H4, we can say, let me just check quickly. We can say it is bullish. Uh, let's see. Okay, we moved higher than that. So the reason why I'm saying it is bullish is because of what? We were bearish. 
and all of that was taken out now we are going up and you can even put your bullish trend line uh, somewhere there and say we are at the bullish trend line and this is where we are having sort of a support but now buying also it's something that it's it's a risk like in terms of where we are right now uh, taking a trade up or to the downside it's something that you need to be very careful with simply because if you're to take a buy trade and say you are bullish and stuff but you need to remember that you are now at that daily resistance daily bearish trend line and they are pushing down so you saying you're bullish on your h4 trying to fight them is not a good idea at the same time you cannot sell without confirmation you cannot sell without confirmation simply because we are coming from those big structures that monthly and weekly area of support are the ones that are pushing up so if you want to push against them for short term you need confirmation to do that so here remember if you wanted to to, to buy you will still use the same uh, thing the same if you feel like you're getting enough confirmations there and then you can catch your thing and exit around there that's fine but you need to make sure that you understand that it's a risky trade and if your account is still small you shouldn't do it but if you want to take those risks uh, where you get trades and then you exit the same day you can do that but it will be much safer if we were to remove that daily resistance and the trend line then when you are buying from those areas of support we know that we don't have any of these that we are worried about here it will have been taken out and then if you wanted to sell you can also do the same you can wait for that momentum to shift to the downside then you locate a retest and then trade like that but it's going to be short term and also confirmation somewhere up there simply because we know that we are coming from a weekly and, and and the monthly support so they are pushing up so for me to say uh, now the price could be going for a push to the downside i needed the price to show me something there must be something that is happening you know if you break this because now we are bullish break this trend then i would say okay maybe let me trust the best for short term but if they don't do anything and you are thinking of selling is going to be a very risky trade not something that i will advise you to do so if let's say you are trading on uh, on on what do you call this on h1 right you will do the same thing and say we have got a, we had a bullish trend going up like that and then now we are outside but unfortunately i'm not going to go into details with this one because that's what uh, some people pay for which is what i teach uh, when you talk about uh, consolidation, uptrend, downtrend, you need to be very, very precise because sometimes those words are just thrown around and not used properly. So you need to be careful here. Here, we are consolidating. Uh, if you think you don't agree with that, leave a comment. But this is what I teach. So I will just say we are consolidating. So you just need to be careful. So already you can see on daily, I mean on H1, the momentum has shifted to the other side. So meaning maybe you get a confirmation there, you go down. But remember, you'll be targeting the next opposing structure. If you're trading here on H1, your next opposing structure is around it there. If you're trading, execute on H4, you'll uh, uh, target H4 support, not the H1 uh, support. So that's how you do it. Everyone? So again, I think I'll leave it here. You can see that there's two possibilities at the moment. We can push up, but there's something that needs to be to happen first before we can feel comfortable in having those uh, trades to the upside. At the same time, it can have another pullback to the downside. Judging from what we saw on daily, being around the daily bearish trend line, daily resistance, there is a possibility of it pushing to the downside. And also on day, I mean, H4, the bullish trend it can be taken out and then have a proper push to the downside so that's what you need to make sure that for you to sell you need to wait for the conditions to be met for you to buy you need to wait for them to be met so it doesn't matter what time frame you, you apply so that's why most of my videos i end here on h1 because i don't do the smaller time frame so you can apply this on your m15 your whatever time frame that you trade for as long as you follow the rules you should be able to be able to identify the same structures that you identify here because the time frame is useless so what's important is this what's important is this let me show you what is important is this is this the chart and the candlesticks and not that so it doesn't matter whether you're looking at h1 or daily or hm15 or whatever what is important is 
looking at this structure here even if i don't tell you what what time frame it is can you show me the key structures can you identify your areas of support your trend lines or the sensitive areas where the price might struggle to to to, to sort of um to to break them if you can't do that then it doesn't matter whether you're doing it on h4 or h1 so you need to make sure that you are good with reading the structure which is what i teach so if you're interested in the mentorship you can leave a comment or you can contact me on telegram because there are already people that are added on the list and my plan is to start the lessons for this year towards the end of the month so last week the last week of jen that's when we're going to start with the lesson so if you want to be part of that group you can just leave a comment or just text me on telegram then we will take it from there so then i will teach you all of this in full details all right guys so that's all that i had for you on this week 75 so if you haven't subscribed and you like this style of trading so this is all that i do i do not complicate things i don't add indicators i don't add a lot of things here on the chart i want the chart to be clear so that when i say this is a zone i can see it's a zone i don't want to have you know you see people having trend lines like this like that like that and then having something else here and you will get confused so if i was to try and explain maybe the same concept but already i have a lot of drawings like this on my chart then you're going to be confused because you won't know what to focus on so the way i teach I make sure that I simplify this as, as, as much as I can so that it's easier for everyone to understand it. And also you can see the way I do it. If you've been watching some of most of the videos here, you can see I do the same thing over and over again. That's it. We don't have to complicate things. We don't have to change the rules. We just need to master the rules and make sure that we are able to apply them regardless of what chart we are looking at. All right, guys, so that's all that I had for you. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.